Hey there guys, Paul here from the engineeringmindset.com. In this video, we're going to be discussing rooftop units. Coming up, what is an RTU? Where are they used? How do they work? The different types, and as well as the components inside, such as heat exchangers, filters, fans, ductwork, grills, air hoods, etc. If you like the information you see on this channel, and I really hope you do, then it's easy to keep your education going by heading over to Danfoss Learning, who have kindly sponsored this video. Danfoss wants to encourage people all around the world to learn as much as possible about engineering. So they built a free online learning platform packed full of courses on pretty much every conceivable engineering topic, including additional lessons about rooftop units. All you have to do to get started is click the link in the video description below, create your free Danfoss Learning profile, and then pick your first class. Pop Engineers Quiz, what does a package air conditioning unit mean? Tell me your answers in the comments section below and I will reveal the answer at the very end of the video. Okay, rooftop units. As the name suggests, rooftop units, or RTU for short, are located on the roof of shops and small commercial buildings to provide air conditioning to defined areas. These are packaged air conditioning units and they are so popular because they are simple, compact, self-contained, all-in-one HVAC units. Their purpose is to distribute conditioned air within defined areas of a building. Rooftop units are connected to ductwork, which provides a defined route for the conditioned air to travel along. Now in our last video, we looked at air handling units or AHUs. I would encourage you to watch that if you haven't already, links are in the video description below. If you have watched that, you'll probably notice that these units are very similar. Rooftop units are a type of air handler. The main difference is that they are usually more compact and they're always installed on the roof so they need to be more robust and weatherproof to deal with things like sun, rain, snow, wind, etc. Additionally, AHUs will often be connected to central plants such as chillers and boilers to provide the heating and cooling, but RTUs are self-contained and have everything they need all in one unit. That's why they're called packaged air conditioners and we'll look inside some models just shortly to understand why. There are many types of rooftop units and we'll look at four different typical versions starting with the most basic. This first unit is fresh air only, so that means that there's no recirculation of air occurring. It takes 100% fresh air and conditions it. The return air is usually removed by an external exhaust fan to balance the air pressure within the building, but we won't cover that part in this video. First we have the housing. This needs to protect all the mechanical and the electrical equipment inside the unit from the sun, wind, rain, snow, frost, etc. There will be some access panels built into this to allow engineers to access the components inside and perform maintenance. At one end, there will typically be an air hood. This is where the outside ambient air will be drawn into the machine. The hood is shaped this way to stop water, snow and debris from entering into the unit. There will usually be a mesh across the inlet of the air hood which will prevent wildlife and objects from entering as this will cause blockages and damage the fan. The next thing we might find are some dampers. Not every unit has these, but newer models typically do. These are basically sheets of metal which rotate together. They open fully to allow air to enter the unit, or they close to seal the unit and prevent air from entering or leaving. Some dampers can vary their open position to somewhere between fully open and fully closed, especially if recirculation is used, and we'll look at that later in this video after this basic model. After the dampers, we'll find the filters. These will usually just slide out from the service door. Their purpose is to clean the air by capturing the dirt and the dust which is contained within the incoming fresh outside air. If we don't have filters installed, then the fan, heat exchangers, mechanical components and the ductwork are all going to slowly be covered by the dust and it's going to reduce the effectiveness and the efficiency of the machine. If too much dust builds up on these components, then it's eventually going to lead to the failure of the machine. After the filters, we'll have some coils. These coils will be used to cool or heat the air by adding or removing thermal energy. Depending on where in the world the RTU is located and the ambient conditions it faces, some units will be cooling only, very occasionally they will be heating only, and some will be heating and cooling. If the unit is cooling only, then it will typically have a single coil which is connected to a refrigeration unit. If the unit is heating only, then it will either be connected to a heat pump, a gas burner, or an electrical heating element. If the unit is heating and cooling, then it will either have two heat exchangers, where one will be a cooling coil, which is connected to a refrigeration unit, and that will provide the cooling, and the other will likely be a tube heat exchanger which is connected to a gas burner, or it might be an electrical heater to provide the heating. Alternatively, a unit might provide both heating and cooling using a single coil which is connected to a heat pump. We've covered heat pumps in a previous video, links for that are in the video description below. Most units will use a refrigeration system to provide the cooling. The compressor, condenser, fan and controls are usually located at the rear of the unit or at the side 
and these will be used to reject the heat and keep it away from the intake and the conditioned air which is inside the unit. After the coils, we'll find the fan. This is usually a belt driven centrifugal type fan, but it can also be an EC type fan which are more energy efficient. The fan pulls the air in from outside, then through the dampers, filters, coils, and then we'll push this through the ductwork to be distributed around the building. That's our most basic type of rooftop unit. So what else might we find? Some units might recirculate the internal air for a return ductwork system. This is used to save energy, especially in winter when the outside air is very cold and the return air is very warm. We can use this to reduce the heating load by mixing some of the warm return air in with the cold fresh air intake. In this design, we find a return air damper in the unit. This will work in sync with the intake air damper and the two will vary their position to change the mixture of how much fresh air and how much return air is passing through the unit. There will always be a certain amount of fresh air entering into this type because otherwise the building will simply fill up with CO2 and create a very unhealthy atmosphere. As the damper opens, the suction of the fan will pull air in through the ductwork. When the damper closes, no air will be drawn in. Another version will come across, and this type is very common. In this design, we again have the return air damper, but this time some of the air or all of the air can be rejected to atmosphere. The temperature of the outside air and the return air, and sometimes the CO2 levels of the return air, will dictate how much air will be rejected and how much will be mixed and recirculated. In this type of unit, when the outside air temperature is below or close to the desired indoor air temperature, 100% fresh air can be blown into the building and none of it will be recirculated. All of it will be rejected as the cooling demand is met. This is referred to as free cooling cycle or an airside economizer cycle. The final version we'll look at has a heat wheel built into the unit. This is growing in popularity with the increasing need for energy efficiency in buildings to reduce CO2 emissions, but also energy and utility costs. This unit first pulls air in through the hood. The amount of air entering is controlled by the damper. The air then passes through a filter to catch the dirt and the dust and protect the surface of the heat wheel. It will then pass through the heat wheel. The heat wheel is a rotating heat exchanger which picks up the waste heat or cool from the return discharge air and then transfers this over to the incoming fresh air without the two air streams mixing. These heat wheels are not completely airtight so a little bit of air mixing will occur. The heat wheel is used to offset the heating and sometimes cooling demand when conditions are right. This will save energy as well as utility costs. After the heat wheel, the air flows through to another filter. Just before the filter, we have a damper on the return air stream. This allows us to recirculate some of the return air into the fresh air and the quantity is varied by using the dampers. Not all heat wheel RTUs will have this feature. Some will use only 100% fresh air intake and extract. If the unit doesn't have the option to recirculate, then the unit probably will not have a second filter bank here. After this, the air will flow through the heat exchangers, which will heat or cool the air to the desired temperature. The fan will then distribute the air through the building via the ductwork to the designated locations. The return air is then pulled back into the RTU for the return ductwork. Once it re-enters the RTU, it has the option to either recirculate some of the air back into the fresh air intake, Otherwise, it will all pass through a filter and then through the heat wheel to recapture the waste heat. After the heat wheel, we might find an extract fan. Otherwise, the pressure caused by the main supply fan will force the air out in some designs. The air then passes through the extract damper, which is used to vary the volume of return air mixing as well as the pressure inside the building. After that, it passes through a grill, which just stops objects and wildlife from entering into the unit. It will then be ejected from the system into the atmosphere. All right, before we wrap things up, I just want to remind you to sign up for your free Danfoss learning profile. Doing so gets you access to over 1500 e-lessons, including several about rooftop units. Go give it a try now. Links are in the video description below. Engineers quiz answers. At the beginning of the video, I asked you, what does the term package air conditioning unit mean? The answer is that package air conditioners contain all the main components within one casing. So that's the fans, the filters, the cooling and heating coils, the compressors, the controls, etc. The entire system is prefabricated into one package. It comes from the manufacturer and can be quickly installed as one unit. Okay guys, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and it has helped you. If so, then please don't forget to like, subscribe and share and leave your questions in the comment section below. 
You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and theengineeringmindset.com. Once again, thanks for watching.